Good day, folks. This is Greg Judy at Green Pastures Farm. <clears throat> we just uh, moved the mob of cattle off here about an hour ago. Had a really nice cattle drive this morning with, I don't know, there must be 12 or 15 baby calves up there. We had one, uh, matter of fact, had one last night that made the cattle drive, and it went uh, three quarters of a mile up that hill there. And they're on a beautiful pasture up on top today. Anyway, what I wanted to show you is uh, this is a deer hunting property. Um, we have a, a lot of uh, really high quality hunting in this area. And, you know, for deer hunters out there, all oh, those darn cows, the livestock, they just ruin the deer hunting. Just absolutely ruin it. You can't have a big deer if you got, you know, livestock grazing it. It's just the antithesis of big deer well i'm here to differ <laughs> this area down here some of our hunters uh, have nicknamed this the nirvana it's that just absolute magical area we have all these draws come together right down here and there's a creek so there's just super super wildlife habitat uh, all these fingers come around this creek and they all join right down here in this creek at the bottom of this hill and we brought the cattle in here um it was about seven eight days ago it was seven days ago i could not believe the deer sign down here in this creek on the sandbar it looked like you had you know 25 30 deer and they were big tracks and um i'm telling you we are growing some high quality deer in here every year now we're getting nicer racks and you know, I'm I'm a beef cattle guy. I'm a I'm a sheep guy. I like the livestock, but I'm also a, a hunter. I grew up hunting, and it was a tradition in my family. Not only that you went hunting, but that's what you ate. That was your meat supply for the whole year. Because folks, we grew up pretty poor, and we didn't have money for a beef. Uh, if we raised the beef, it was sold to help pay the bills. To keep the bank off our doorstep it wasn't for us to eat okay so i never grew up eating beef we we just didn't eat it you sold that and you used that money to pay the bills and so we ate deer that's what we ate and you know we would if you had a bad season and you didn't get any if you didn't get very many deer it was a lean year because you didn't have any meat other than maybe some chickens and that's why i fished a lot but uh, back to this field here. Folks, this, this field here has never had any lime, uh, no fertilizer on it. And you can see there's a little, there's a few, few little stems of uh, broom sedge sticking up in here. But look at the manure we put down. And folks, this, the cattle will not be here uh, now for another 30, probably 35 days. This is April 15th. It's going to be at least 30 days before we get back here. And this is all going to be a food plot when we come back. And all these hills around here are just full of clover. I'm talking 30 to 35 percent clover. And this is a lease farm, but it's, uh, you know, I've got a hunter up here on the top of the hill. We just brought the cattle out of his place last night. And, uh, you know, turkey season's coming on next week. And, I told him, I said, well, we can be out of there. We won't be in your way. He said, graze it. Get it. He understands the importance of those animals keeping those plants vegetative for his deer. And it was funny. Uh, when we went up there and moved the cows last night, we started picking up deer sheds. I mean, I didn't see them. The grass was so tall when we went up there, but we started picking up deer sheds. And it was, it was kind of, uh, I don't know, it was... It's kind of funny that the landowner was out there this morning and I showed him one I picked up right outside of his house. I mean, literally it's in a hundred feet of his house. And uh, I think, did I take that other one out? I did have one in here. It, it's up in the truck. Anyway, I, uh, so we, we found that one. Then I found another set of eight point sheds and I've never found that before. They're both laying right beside each other. It's like somebody took them off the deer and set them on the ground. And they're right in front of one of his deer stands where he has a trail camera set up. So I'm curious to see if he can get the trail camera picture developed, if, that, if he gets a picture of those antlers falling off the deer. 
in front of the tail cam. That would in front of the trail cam. That would be pretty cool. But you know, back to this this uh, wildlife thing. Hunters own a lot of property. They're very anti-animal far as livestock. Folks, if you can show them where you can grow high-quality deer hunting and turkey. When we pulled into this farm this morning, there was a gobbler strutting up there on the hill. Fanning him, you know, had his fan out, attracting hens to him. And uh, <clears throat> yesterday we heard gobblers gobbling all around here. I mean, it's just a wildlife paradise. That's what we've developed here. And what has helped us do that is animals, livestock. We couldn't have done this with a brush hog. We couldn't have done this just putting down chemical fertilizer. We've got biology going now in the soil. And so, and, you know, also buying purchased hay and unrolling out here. This field here got, I don't know, maybe 10 bales put on it this winter. Sure didn't hurt it any. Uh, I can see the broom sedges getting thinner and thinner. And if we could get a, a piece of equipment in here just to jumpstart this, I, I would play around with the idea of maybe even putting a little lime and phosphorus on it. Maybe some, you know, soft rot phosphate just to get the... I know the uh, we've taken soil samples on it. We're we're in the high fives, 5.8, 5.9, almost six, and we're starting to see some clovers come. But you really get the clover jump when you get that pH over six. You just see it. I mean, the clovers just appear and they just start growing taller, thicker, lusher, healthier plants. Um, we don't have any water down here uh, in the summertime. The cattle have to walk back up that hill, which isn't that far to a pond. But right now, this is pretty cool. I'll show you what we did. Um, we, we put a, a limited livestock access right here. So here's the, per, here's the perimeter fence, or not the, the paddock division. Okay, single high tensile wire. We tied on a high tensile uh, poly braid. And we took it through. The, this, this whole thing here is about, I don't know, 40 feet wide. And it goes down to the creek. Cattle walk down to the creek. It's this solid rock gravel bar. And the animals are only on this for one day. See that? We got a beautiful stream of water flowing right there. And there's the corner post. It's just a step in. And so we got a hot wire apron. There's the other side of it over here. The cows can walk down here. They don't loader around down here, or they don't hang out down here, because these rocks are hard on their feet. Okay, they get them a drink out of this nice, cool, fresh water, and then they go back up in the field and eat. So this is an awesome water point, and this will last us until probably most years around July. And then after that, July, August, you get up in those 100 degree temperatures, uh, this creek does not flow. That's when we have to depend on the pond up there on the hill. Which isn't a, you know, it's not bad. It's just, it's handy when you can use things like this. And then, of course, uh, when we're done with it, we just roll this wire up. There's our gate handle hanging over here. And we close that gate right there. And uh, reel up our reel, which I'm getting ready to do right now. So it's pretty darn cool when you can take, you know, a creek and, you know, you just don't give it to them to stand in all day long. And uh, it, it doesn't hurt the creek. If you're in it for 24-7, 365 days of the year, that's not a good scene at all. You're going to destroy that creek. Your water's going to be really, really nasty too. But boy, I'm telling you. I like what I see here, folks. We just went over 160 acres here in the month of April, and we went over it in about seven days. And so what do we got? We got a 160-acre food plot for the deer and the turkey. The turkeys, uh, when we came on this farm, you couldn't find a manure path that wasn't turned over. Okay. They flip these things. Well, you know why they're flipping them. There's a butte right there. Oh, gosh. Whew. That one almost makes my eyes tear up to look at it. Look at that. I'm going to take my foot and open it. 
Oh, oh yeah. That's beautiful, folks. That's just beautiful. It's got the same consistency of pumpkin pie filling. There's no water coming to it. And it smells just wonderful. Put a little milk with that and you can have it with your cereal. It's that good. It's just processed grass. That's all it is. Probably build some good bugs in your gut to, to keep you healthy. Here's one that's a little bit runnier. I don't like that one. So that cow's getting more protein and not enough energy. Uh, in other words, she didn't get enough dry matter. And if I take my foot, look at that. Can you see the difference? It's a lot wetter looking. As well, as a matter of fact, you can see bubbles coming up. Okay. You can almost see the water in there. And it's popping. The bubbles are popping. I know this feel, you may not see it on this video, but you can, I can see bubbles popping. So that, that's one that's getting too much protein. Uh, that cow's not doing as good a job of grazing. She should have hunted out a little bit more dry matter. And that's not going to be a problem here where they're going. We've got grass waiting on them up there. It's eight to nine inches tall. But we took this one down, um, but we just won't be back to it. We still have, you know, most places out here around four inches, three to four inches. But man, you talk about a great deer food plot. This is all going to be tender. And hunters understand, you know, they mow the food plots off because if you don't and they get real mature, they're not going to draw deer in at all. Deer do not come to mature plants. They want tender, vegetative stuff. They know that. They have to, they have, to have that to survive. So I'm really excited. We just left a 160 acre food plot behind us. We're going to have some really nice deer. And the, the, the does that are just now dropping their fawns are going to have a 160 acres of new tender forage to nurse. And they'll be milking real well because they're eating super high quality forage. And people say, but Greg, the deer are eating all your feed for your cattle. Uh, there's enough for everybody. There's enough. We've been doing this a long time, and you know what? We haven't gone, gone broke yet, and we still have a lot of deer, and we're still running a sizable cow herd, and everything's good. And our hunters are happy. And we have four farms that are controlled and owned by deer hunters. So, you know, you got to learn how to do this stuff, folks, if you want to get deer hunting properties. And I suggest uh, doing that. So I'm going to sign off today. For those of y'all new to the channel, just drop by. Thank you. Uh, hit the subscribe button on the way out if you'd like. And uh, we'll see you folks down the road. Oh, I wanted to give a plug on our grazing school. Uh, it is uh, <clears throat> rescheduled for September 10th through the 12th and 17th through the 19th. I believe this. they're two weeks uh, back to back. And uh, I'll be making a YouTube separate about it. I didn't want to make a big announcement to everybody that was signed up gets the chance to pick which school they want to go to thank you all my goodness i can't believe how many of y'all just just transferred and that's awesome uh, we ended up with about an 85 percent transfer rate and uh, i don't know there's people that you know you can't you, you know september those dates didn't work for you and i apologize for that but it's out of our control but we're gonna have two great schools in september we're looking forward to meeting all y'all and uh, go to our website, greenpasturesfarm.net, if you're interested. We still have spots available, and I'm, it's probably going to fill up, and so you don't want to be wasting a lot of time if you're thinking about it. But uh, hope to see some of y'all down the road there. This uh, won't be spring. It'll be in the fall. And uh, be a great time and a good learning experience, and uh, we'll see y'all down the road.